Today is the official start of June and also the official start of meteorological summer as well. So we're going to be looking ahead to your June forecast for 2024 in today's video, including temperatures, precipitation, severe weather through June, and the hurricane season starts today as well. So we'll be looking at all of that in today's weather forecast. So thanks for joining here on this Saturday, June 1st. And let's first look back at May because May was very interesting as well. Let's look at our temperature anomalies here in degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see across the Eastern US, predominantly very warm May it was. And across the West, it was a much cooler May, especially for the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies and even up here into Southern Canada as well. Now we look at all the precipitation that we did receive across the United States in May and it was a very active May not only from heavy precipitation standpoint but also severe weather across portions of the plains up into the Midwest even further east into the Ohio Valley and the Southeast. It was a very active May for precipitation and severe weather and you can see just how active it was. Here Here's your precipitation anomaly in May. And the, there's a couple corridors where we saw a lot of precipitation. The first corridor up here into the upper Midwest from Wisconsin back into Iowa, we actually chipped away at our drought in these areas. And a lot of these areas have actually gone drought free over the last several weeks through May. A second area of uh, very heavy precipitation down here near the Gulf Coast from Georgia, Northwest Florida, westward through Alabama, Mississippi, but especially Louisiana and much of East Central Texas. Some of those areas up to 22 inches above the norm for this time of year for that 30 day period. So a very wet May it was across especially East Texas there. So if you are new here to the channel and weather on the go, we do cover weather across Southern Canada, the United States and the tropics. Today is the start of the hurricane season. So we'll be covering that on this channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. Give the video a like by giving it a thumbs up down below and also leave any comments, questions and concerns below. We'll get to those after the video. So now let's look at the climate update here from the Climate Prediction Center. And you can see that we are actually near neutral conditions and actually in neutral conditions right now. And neutral is from plus 0.5 to negative 0.5. And we are currently at negative 0.182. So we are firmly in the middle there of ENSO neutral conditions. But looking here at the sea surface temperature anomalies across the equatorial Pacific Ocean, we do have those cooler anomalies because becoming more prevalent across those regions, which means our climate pattern is changing from El Nino that we did have this past year all the way back now to La Nina. And you can see here that the Climate Prediction Center's latest outlook here that was released in May has us firmly at a 50% neutral and we're actually there now. So we're 100% neutral right now essentially and we'll continue to remain neutral as we go through much of the month of June. So looking at the two differences, what is La Nina, what is El Nino here, and what is in between, which is neutral, La Nina with the jet streams here brings the polar jet further to the south and the subtropical jet or Pacific jet stream is also further north and they kind of join forces up across the Pacific Northwest and across the northern U.S. and that brings wetter conditions during La Nina years across the north and drier conditions across the southern tier of the United States. With El Nino, the polar jet stream is a little more diffuse. It's further north and away from the subtropical jet. The subtropical jet very, very strong down here across the southern U.S., pumping in that eastern Pacific moisture. That continues to create wet conditions across the south while the north is dry in an El Nino. And when you have both, we have a lot of active weather. And that's what we've been seeing in May. And I think that carries over into the month of June. So let's waste no time. Let's get into this here. You can see the 500 millibar height anomalies here from June 1st today through June 8th, this is the first week in June, you have a low pressure trough up here across the Aleutian Islands and into portions of Southern Canada. And that trough will actually feed in to the Eastern US as we go into the first week through June here and a ridge of high pressure out West. So what this all means is active weather will be likely where that trough is across the Eastern two thirds of the United States and where that ridge is out West, heat will be building and we'll have drier conditions most likely. So let's look Look here at our temperature anomalies from now through June 8th. You can see where that ridge is, like we mentioned, that's where we're going to have those above normal temperature anomalies across the western third of the country where that trough is. 
More active weather temperatures will be near normal to slightly below normal here, and that will actually trail all the way back up into southern Canada. And looking at the precipitation through the first week of June, looks very active up here into the upper Midwest, the lower Midwest through the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes region, and up into the northeast here. Very active over top of that ridge and diving southeastward. We may have the pattern setting up for a few days here through this week that could lead to mesoscale convective systems with severe weather across parts of the Midwest into the Ohio Valley, parts of the Great Lakes. We'll have to keep a close eye on that. As we go into the second week in June here, June 8th through June 15th, this gets us towards Father's Day weekend. And you can see we do have a trough out east here. That trough that we see this week will linger around into the second week of June across the Great Lakes and into the eastern U.S., while that ridge will linger around out west. So what we see this week will likely extend even into the second week in June as well. So what this means is the ridge out west will be giving us some warmer than normal temperatures for the western U.S. and western Canada for places like British Columbia, Alberta, maybe even parts of Saskatchewan. But eastern United States and eastern Canada will be predominantly a little cooler than normal. Now, when you see blue anomalies on this map, that doesn't mean cold temperatures by any means. It is June after all but just slightly below normal temperature. So for example, if your temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit for a normal high and it's 78 degrees, that is considered below normal. So that is what we could see across the Eastern US into the second week in June. Precipitation wise looks very active across the Eastern US. Again, on the Eastern side of that ridge, we have a lot of those disturbances moving up and over top of that across Southern Canada. And then diving southeast into the United States, this could bring us more bouts of heavy rain, but also severe weather into parts of the Mid-South, into the eastern U.S. here from the Mid-Atlantic, into the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, Northeast, a lot of these areas getting wet and maybe some severe weather. As we go into the th second half of June, the third week now, June 15th through June 23rd, there you go. We have a ridge of high pressure building out of Mexico northward into places like Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, and that is going to anchor the heat and I think a true heat wave will start to emerge as we go into the third week in June. You can see a really big heat wave trying to develop here across the Four Corners region there around Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, but also it's very dry in West Texas. So I think the heat will extend out here as well into Kansas, into Oklahoma, Nebraska. A lot of these areas are going to be very hot into that third week in June. We start to get rid of that trough a little bit across the eastern U.S., but we still have disturbances moving over the top. So we have a lot of instability or potential instability developing. That's thunderstorm fuel. And on the northeastern quadrant of that ridge, as it builds out of Mexico, will be an area of concern for potentially a few of those uh, derechos with the severe weather season. Those are long lasting storms to complexes that move over several states and sometimes for a couple of days. So we definitely could see that and some very heavy rain. Now, as we go into the last week in June, June 23rd through June 30th, you can see that ridge begins to build further north, but also spread out across the Gulf Coast, the Southeast Coast, all the way back here through Texas Hill Country and the Southern Plains and even the Four Corners region. So we see that ridge elongate, and that means much more of the United States will be in line for a much more substantial heat wave as we go into the last week in June, and that will be further north. We could have heat building all the way up into Southern Canada by this time and also heat building further east into the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, into the Southeast and parts of the Mid-Atlantic. If there are a couple areas in late June that I would say would be near normal, it'd be the Northeast into Southern Florida or over here, especially into the Pacific Northwest or Western Canada here. That's where we're going to have that active weather. And you can see that here with the precipitation, active weather across Western Canada, the Pacific Northwest, and then over top of that ridge again, we have more of those disturbances leading to more heavy rain fall threats and more severe weather threats as we go into last week in June. Let's look at the official NOAA Clim uh, Climate Prediction Center temperature outlook for the month of June. You can see it goes along with that, um, looking at above normal temperatures out across the western two-thirds of the country, equal chances out east, which I think a lot of this will be near normal temperatures, if not slightly below normal temperatures for places like the Ohio Valley, parts of the southeast, and the mid-Atlantic. Now, looking at the monthly per precipitation outlook from NOAA, the Climate Prediction Center, they do have a couple areas of interest for above normal precipitation. Now do take this with a grain of salt. 
but you do see a well above average precip up here for places like Seattle, like Western Washington, the Western Cascades up here, even Northwestern Oregon, dry in the Northern Rockies, parts of the Intermountain West there from Montana all the way back down towards Salt Lake City there and into Northeastern Nevada. And then as we go across the Southern tier of the United States, Southern Plains into the Dixie Alley region above normal precipitation is favored, equal chances around that. But I think a lot of the East will be wet and above average again up here toward Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and stuff like that, including the I-95 corridor. Now, we do have to look at this a little bit deeper because it, with all the heat building out west and all the dry weather, well, that's going to lead to more drought conditions developing or actually worsening across this region. Look at the western U.S., the Climate Prediction Center, valid for the month of June 2024, these areas in yellow have drought development likely. So we're likely to see drought develop, if not worsen, in areas like the Four Corners region, West Texas, South Texas, into the Rio Grande Valley, and parts of the Pacific Northwest, like Washington State, Northeastern Oregon, into Northern Idaho and Western Montana. A lot of those areas will be seeing worsening drought, while drought will improve across portions of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and over here into the Mississippi Valley, where we have drought currently with the active weather. Now, with with the active weather, with that being said, this could lead to not only heavy rainfall, but severe weather. So here is my weather on the go, severe weather forecast for the entire month of June from today through June 30th. If you are in the yellow, you do have a possibility of severe weather. That's essentially the entire United States. It is June. It is the warm season. It's severe weather season that is possible. Looking at the orange, it's likely you see severe weather here across the plains, over here into the Midwest, parts of the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley into the Southeast. This does include the Deep South, like Dixie Alley region as well. Looking at the red shade of color, that's where it's very likely. And this is probably the area where we could have more frequent severe weather outbreaks and more of like those lines of storms, those mesoscale convective systems, those bow echoes that could turn into derechos that could start up here in the Eastern Dakotas and dive Southeast through the Corn Belt through the Midwest here into the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley. So we're going to be watching out for that corridor that's on the northeastern and eastern quadrant of that ridge. A lot of potential instability will be building down in this area that I'm circling now here with the mouse. And you can see to the northeast, that's where we're going to have a lot of that wind shear and that jet stream enhancing all of that. So we're going to see the potential for derechos. So what in the heck is a derecho? Well, looking at a derecho environment here, a high pressure system not is not going to be across the southeast, but this this is a good example. When you put this high pressure system out west, the airflow around it is always going to be clockwise around a high pressure system. And we can start to see more of those progressive derechos, just like we were showing you on my severe weather forecast. And looking at derecho climatology, one derecho every year here in this blue area in the lighter green, you get one derecho every two years. In the yellow or orange, that's one derecho every four years. And the most frequent area with derecho development is actually the tri-state area here near Tulsa, near Joplin near the Fayetteville, Arkansas area. That's Northeast Oklahoma, Southwest Missouri, and Northwest Arkansas. They average four derechos every three years. And looking at derecho frequency by month, um, you can see it spikes to a 22% there frequency in May, drops to 20%, but still a pretty high frequency in June. And then a second surge as we go into July to 21% before dropping back in August to 6%. And do note that between May and August, 70% of derechos occur during that period. So derechos can occur in any month, J January all the way to December, but they're most frequent. 70% of them occur between May and August. So that is something to note. And again, a derecho is an intense line of fast moving storms that typically go 400 miles or more and are about 60 miles wide. So we're definitely could see that as we go through the summer. Now let's turn gears here over to the hurricane season because this looks to be and promises to be one of the most active hurricane seasons possibly on record here. Looking at the National Hurricane Center's Atlantic Hurricane and Tropical Storm Activity climatology here, you can see in June, today is the start of the hurricane season in the North Atlantic. Atlantic Basin, we are actually going to start seeing some more frequency of those tropical storms, those tropical depressions, hurricanes, major hurricanes as we go through the month of June. In the Eastern Pacific Basin, that actually starts pretty soon as well. So we're already seeing investigative areas of uh, tropical cyclones in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. This will only ramp up as we get deeper into the hurricane season. So let's look at our sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic because they are off the charts, folks. I mean, these waters out here 
here in the main development region in the Caribbean in parts of the Gulf here and even now starting to warm up in the western Atlantic and northwest Atlantic up here toward the northeast this is very warm folks and this is going to feed in to one variable of our hurricane season now water temperatures aren't everything but looking here at precipitation anomalies, we may start to see some of these waves moving off Africa as we get deeper into the summer, probably not too much in June. We're going to probably be looking at more areas near land that have either these cold fronts diving south with those severe weather events and get hung up on the southeast coast and could provide low pressure systems like the Carolinas or Florida or near the Gulf Coast that could turn into something that is tropical. Or down here in the Caribbean, looks pretty active near the Bahamas as well with at least thunderstorm activity whether or not they turn into tropical cyclones is yet to be seen but looking here at climatology for named storms if you are looking for them in june especially early to mid-june you look down here near the carolina coast near florida near the gulf coast here or anywhere in the gulf of mexico and even down into our portions of the yucatan we definitely could be seeing that as well in areas where we have seen hurricanes in early June and the early part of the hurricane season are in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. It is certainly warm enough to support one there. And again, like I said, we could have one of those setups where a cold front drops south, we have a low pressure system develop along it, and maybe something happens as we go deeper into June. Now, the eastern Pacific Basin is warm as well. Not as warm as the North Atlantic, but it is warm. So we're definitely still seeing some trouble here. We definitely could still see some storms. We've had some investigative areas of tropical development. With 10, 20, even 30% probabilities of that so far this season. With these tropical waves and moisture moving off of Central America and South of Mexico into the Eastern Pacific Ocean, and this has led to some areas of potential formation. We'll keep an eye on that. And you can see in these blue and especially green shaded areas, in the eastern Pacific Basin, that's where those named storms could be, and even the, into the yellow area there, just southwest of Mexico, that's where we would look here this time of year in June for any hurricanes or major hurricanes to develop in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Now, with that said, we are transitioning towards La Nina, so I think I would favor more of the North Atlantic Ocean being very active this year. The Eastern Pacific Ocean could still be active, but I think as we're getting closer toward La Nina, it's going to start to become less active in the Eastern Pacific. But while we're in neutral conditions right now, things look like they're active potentially in both of the Pacific and Atlantic basins. We'll keep you updated on that. If you did like today's video, give it a like down below. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel here at Weather on the Go. We cover Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics on this channel. Another weather forecast video for the United States, Southern Canada, and everything will be tomorrow morning. Morning, so be looking out for that. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those after the video, and I hope everyone has a wonderful start to meteorological summer out there.